Section 79 of The Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John of the Cross. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book 3, Chapter 30 The Evils Resulting from the Will's Rejoicing in This Kind of Goods. He who rejoices in supernatural goods falls, in my opinion, into three principal evils. He deceives and is deceived, loses faith, and becomes vainglorious. As to the first, it is very easy to deceive oneself and others by rejoicing in these supernatural operations. The reason is that, in order to ascertain whether they are true or false, how and when they are to be exerted, it requires great deliberation and great light from God. Now, our rejoicing in and esteeming these operations are a great impediment to this, partly because the joy in question dulls and obscures the judgment, and partly also because it makes us not only covet these operations extremely, but also inclines us to an unseasonable manifestation of them. Admitting even that these operations and powers be real, yet these two defects are enough to delude us. Either we do not comprehend them as they ought to be comprehended, or we do not profit by them and employ them at the right time and in the right way. For though it be true that God, when he distributes these graces, also gives the light to see them, and the inward movement to manifest them at the right time and in the right way, Still those who receive them, because of their self-seeking or some imperfection or other in the matter, may fall into great errors, by not using their gifts with that perfectness which God requires with respect to time and manner. We have an example in Balaam, who, contrary to the will of God, undertook to curse the people of Israel. God was therefore angry with him, and sought to kill him. Again, in St. James and St. John, who, carried away by their zeal, would have fire, descend from heaven upon the Samaritans, because they refused to receive our Lord. For this he rebuked them. It is clear from this that imperfect persons, of whom I am speaking, may be influenced by certain imperfect feelings involved in the joy and esteem of these gifts, to manifest them at improper times. For when they are free from the like imperfections, they are moved to manifest them only as and when God wills. In no other way is the manifestation of them convenient. This is the meaning of that complaint which God makes against certain prophets, saying, I did not send prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. And again in the same place, they caused my people to err by their lying, and by their wonders, when I sent them not, nor commanded them. It is said in the same place that they prophesied the delusions of their own heart, which they would not have done had they not attached themselves in this abominable way to their gifts, using them as their own. All this shows us that the evil of such rejoicing not only leads men to make an impious and perverse usage of the gifts of God, like Balaam and those prophets who, by the wonders which they wrought, deceived the people, but even to make use of them without having received them from God, like those who uttered their own fancies for prophecies and published visions which themselves invented, or which the devil represented to them. For when Satan sees men with such dispositions as these, he opens for them a wide field, and supplies them with abundant materials, intruding himself in diverse ways, whereupon such men spread their sails to the wind, become shamelessly presumptuous and prodigal in the usage of their great gifts. The evil does not stop here, for joy in supernatural gifts and the desire of them reach so far that if men have entered into a secret compact with Satan, it is such a compact that enables many to do what they are doing, they venture still further and enter into an open and avowed compact, making themselves his disciples and allies by an express stipulation. Hence, come wizards, enchanters, magicians, soothsayers, and sorcerers. 
this joy leads men so far that they seek to purchase with money not only these gifts and graces as did simon magus that they may serve the devil but holy things also and what i cannot write about without trembling things divine may god here show his great mercy how hurtful to themselves and ruinous to christendom are such men any one may easily perceive all those magicians and soothsayers among the people of israel whom saul destroyed out of the land had fallen into these great abominations and delusions because they would imitate the true prophets of god he who is supernaturally endowed ought therefore to cleanse himself from all desire of and all joy in the exercise of his supernatural gifts and god who gives them supernaturally for the edification of the church in general or its members in particular will also supernaturally direct him in the use of them in the right way and at the right times as he commanded his disciples to take no thought beforehand how and what they should speak that being a supernatural act of faith so also it is his will the use of these gifts being not of less importance that man should bide his time because the exercise of these gifts is to depend upon his will thus the disciples in whom the gifts and graces were infused prayed god to put forth his hand so that the hearts of the people might bow down before the faith grant unto thy servants and with all confidence they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to cures and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy son jesus the second evil loss of faith may come from the first and this in two ways in the first place it may concern others for when a man undertakes to perform a miracle out of season and without necessity over and above that this is to tempt god which is a great sin he may not succeed and so the faith will lose credit and reverence among men though sometimes men may succeed in what they thus attempt because god wills it for some reason or another as in the case of the witch of endor if it was samuel himself who then appeared they shall not always succeed and when they do succeed they are not the less in error and blamable because they use their gifts inopportunely in the second place the loss of faith concerns those who are endowed with supernatural gifts in that they destroy the merits of it for when men attach so much importance to miracles they depart from the substantial exercise of faith which is an obscure habit and so where signs and miracles abound there is the less merit in believing faith has no merit saith saint gregory the great where human reason supplies proof god works miracles when they are necessary for the faith or for other ends of his glory and of his saints for this reason did god work many signs before he showed himself to his disciples that they might believe without seeing and so not lose the merit of faith in his resurrection which they would have done had they not seen him first he showed to mary magdalene first the empty sepulchre and then the angels announced his rising again for faith cometh by hearing so that having heard she might believe before she saw and when he showed himself unto her it was as the gardener that he might thoroughly edify her in the faith which in the warmth of his presence melted away he sent the women to tell his disciples that he had risen and afterwards they came to see the sepulchre he set on fire the hearts of the disciples on the road to Emmaus before they knew him, for he was with them in disguise. And finally he rebuked them, because they did not believe those who told them of his resurrection. And in particular St. Thomas, because he would have palpable proof of his resurrection, saying, Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. Miracles are not pleasing unto God, for he rebuked the Pharisees, because they would not believe without them, saying, Unless you see signs and wonders, you believe not. Those, therefore, who will rejoice in these supernatural gifts, inflict upon themselves a grievous loss in the matter of faith. 
The third evil is that men, because of their rejoicing in supernatural gifts, fall into vainglory or some other vanity. The mere act of rejoicing in them, if not purely in and for God, is vanity. This is evident from the fact that our Lord rebuked his disciples because they rejoiced in that the evil spirits were subject unto them. If that joy had not been vanity, our Lord would never have rebuked them for it. End of section 79